Jonathan, we know it's going to happen anyway. Taper, barring a meteor or asteroid hitting Earth. Why does timing matter, though, in this case? Uh, I think that, you know, obviously the market is very much mindful of, of, of how much is kind of already been priced into uh, the, the relative yield outlooks, etc. So uh, timing can be important, but I, I don't think that really will alter the where markets ultimately trend to, which is still probably further dollar strength and greater volatility in risk assets, particularly equities, commodities, which look still a little bit too elevated for risk that we do see, you know, less global money supply support as we progress through the second half of this year. Uh, some would say the dollar is overvalued at this point, but could last the strength for some time. How, how would you make of it right now? If we get, in fact, a, a dovish taper mm. from the Fed, what would that mean for the greenback? Well, I think if we get a dovish taper, the you know the DXY index probably dump, dumps back down through you know 93. Maybe we get back to, to 92 and a half, that type of level. But I would still think that moves up to Euro 118. Aussie up to 73. I still think the market probably fades that because if we get another strong employment report, then I think we're back onto the, the to the taper debate quite quickly in the US. So I think that that's still a risk that the market is ultimately going to, to buy into this dip from a US dollar standpoint over the next one or two months. And the debate is what happens to emerging markets because the last time this happened, it was the type of heartbreak you never forget, 2013. Does this mm. happen this time around? Well, I think that markets, particularly in EMA, are better prepared this time around. Uh, current account balances are higher. FX reserves are particularly higher, particularly in places like India and Indonesia, which obviously suffered a lot in 2013. That's not to say that there won't be fallout for these economies, but certainly the type of, you know, FX markets move of, you know, 10, 15 percentage points that we saw in 2013 aren't on the cards in it this time around. Uh, just talking through some of your calls here, you're saying you favor the Kiwi versus and Cat over the Aussie. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this is more about the central bank divergence, I'm guessing, and that kind of play here. Uh, talk us through some of these moves. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. I mean, I think that you know the the RBNZ is still close to liftoff from a, a cash rate perspective in terms of raising interest rates. I still think the RBA is quite some time away. With the debate still about whether the RBA may delay its planned taper of its bond buying program, given the COVID situation here in Australia. So that really still favours kind of Aussie Kiwi coming under downside pressure, and, and, and Kiwi still outperforming on that basis.